you go. Hey guys, Chris here from Lifeline EMS Training. Today we're going to talk about placenta previa and abruptio placenta and the differences. Essentially, the differences are one is an implantation issue and one is a too early pulling away from the wall issue. So let's do a quick recap on the placenta. So what is the role of the placenta? Well, the role of the placenta is essentially the buffet and blood supply for the baby from mom. So it's an organ or comes an organ, develops throughout the gestation, plants on the uterine wall. It's where the umbilical cord, veins, and artery connect and supply the baby. So implantation is a very big deal for the placenta and seating on that uterine wall is very critical so that it establishes that good maternal vasculature that provides that buffet and blood supply or nutrients and blood flow. So that's how I remember how the baby oxygenates. That's how the baby gets rid of waste. That's how the baby gets its nutrients. It's a very, very critical piece. So here we'll take a quick picture of the placenta. So to the left is that placenta and you'll see the maternal circulation which is the endometrial arteries and veins. Uh, they actually supply into the intervillous spaces. They're attached by the myometrium. And so it's those vasculature that sticks or glues to the wall of the uterus. And then all of that vasculature, that nutrients flows, goes into the umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries. So what sticks to the wall, like how does that actually stick to the wall? Well, the primary adhesion is vasculature. So it's vasculature on the mom's side of the house that gets that placenta or that disc of life on the wall. And there circled here to the right is actually the primary points of implantation. Anywhere here or here is where we hope it implants. Anywhere north of here is okay as well issue being when the baby starts to deliver, as the baby comes out, we lose a lot of that extra tag line or that distance with the umbilical cord. So right here to the left or to the right of the vaginal opening is the ideal point of implantation. So because when the baby comes out, like we said earlier, we want that extra line for the umbilical cord or that extra distance for the umbilical cord to give us the um, leeway with delivery because if we get nuchal cord it's wrapped around their neck we want that extra kind of slack if you will to be able to lift it over the baby so some common terms we'll hear and in the third trimester or before the baby starts to deliver are dilation and effacement and these have to do with the cervix so right down here so dilation is the opening of the cervix. So the distance between the sides of the cervix. So how much is it dilating or opening up so the baby's head can actually start to come through, right? Because otherwise, these are almost connected with a mucus plug in between. So these points of the cervix are very close to each other, plugged by a mucus plug, allowing the amniotic fluid to stay within the uterus and around the baby. So dilation is that starts to open up and effacement is it starts to thin out. So the cervical wall starts to become more thin as it becomes effaced, which means it has a lot more give or ease or allowance for the baby to deliver through. So the cervix here, as the labor process progresses, thins out or faces and dilates, opens up. Well, with placenta previa, that might be an issue. So placenta previa is a low implantation of the placenta over the cervical opening. And as that, or if that cervical opening starts to progress, meaning starts to dilate in the face, we get ripping of the placenta and those vessels off that uterine wall around the cervix, which is a problem. So this is an implantation issue with the placenta previa. And mothers seeking prenatal care where they're getting ultrasonography, they're getting true follow-ups, not just prenatal care like they go to the store and buy a bunch of prenatal vitamins. They actually are getting checked and ultrasonography tests to see where the implantation is, the progression of the baby, the delivery, um, or the, I'm sorry, the gestation of the baby. They are usually put on bed rest or reduced work because they don't want to irritate this area. And they also, in a lot of instances, have 
planned inductions so that uh, they're going to have a C-section. So the baby is removed through the abdomen versus through the cervical opening. Now, the test question answers on this are it's bright red bleeding and painless. Now, there's some individuals that may uh, have pain for other reasons. The bleeding part can be challenging, right? Because if the blood has sat in a pad or um, an absorbative, absorbative area for a long while, the ability to discern its bright redness can be a challenge. But the test answer is bright red vaginal bleeding that is painless is A, placenta previa, B, abruptio placenta, or C, tension pneumothorax, right? Yeah, we'll see is not even anything near right, but it would be A, bright red bleeding um, that is painless. So a Previc placenta or placenta previa is a placenta that's implanted right above the cervical opening. Abruptio placenta is early removal or detraction of the uterus from, I'm sorry, the placenta from the uterine wall. Things that cause that, right? And here's a picture of a mom who fell down the stairs. So abruptio placenta is the early removal of the placenta from the uterine wall. Things that cause it, we talked a second ago about trauma, falling down the stairs, rapid adjournment to the abdominal cavity, smoking, smoking because you get changes in the vascular structure, constriction, which removes its ability to maintain that connectivity, nice, happy, connect, healthy connectivity with the uterine wall. Uh, cocaine, uh, highly don't recommend doing that at all, more or less during pregnancy. Infections can cause it by creating inflammation, irritation, and damaging the adhesions of the placenta, the uterine wall. And then abdominal trauma, right? The soccer ball to the abdomen, the lateral trauma from a T-bone accident when mom is driving, seatbelt over top the abdomen, the uh, rambunctious two or three-year-old that runs into mom or does a nosedive into mom from the side may cause that. Also, if mom has a reduction in amniotic fluid, which means the shock absorption volume in that uterus is reduced, that could create an issue or make them prone to the um, abruptio placenta. With it, it is it has the pain. So it would be the one with the dark red blood and the pain. So they may get back pain or abdominal pain, back cramping, abdominal cramping, different than contractions which contractions usually start in the back, wrap around the front over time, and their frequency becomes increased. This is usually described as a steady pain or ebbs and flows, but not in a consistent or rhythmic type of contractile activity. So again, the one I always like to highlight is the airbags. We have those people that sit three and three quarter inches from the airbag, and the velocity of that airbag coming out can cause a rapid trauma to the abdomen. So that's why I'm Moms who are pregnant are encouraged to sit back and lean this, the um, back of the chair back as well so that they're not sitting upright and having that velocity of that blunt trauma hitting their abdomen. So again, back pain, abdominal pain. This is the dark red blood that is painful. So there's lots of things that can cause these issues. Um, things I like to highlight are the test question like specifics so that dark red blood because what's happening is it's breaking away higher up and it's actually over time congealing or becoming deoxygenated if you will so it also has um the pain with it um this is an emergency that the um they need to get to obstetric assessment very quickly because the baby, well, actually technically in both instances there's, is an emergency, but the baby in this instance, you may have had the traumatic event happen a while ago, which is why your history is important, which we'll hit on here in a second, but the baby's lacking that good oxygenated and nutrient blood flow. And it may not present in the short term, like the Previc placenta does where the, um, uh, leak point is right at where the placenta is implanted. So with the assessment, it's how long has this been going on? Have you had any recent trauma? And this is for both of them. Uh, and that trauma includes falls. That includes your happy little two-year-old. Have they run into you? Have you bumped into anything? Have you been receiving prenatal care to in, 
include ultrasonography assessments? Have you been taking your prenatal medications? What's the gestational age of the baby? Um, how many babies do you have in there? Do you have four, five, six? And how many placentas do you have? Do you have one for the three babies or do you have three babies each with their own placenta? Do you have any cramping? Do you have any back pain? Have you ever had a history of this before? Did the back pain and cramping start after the traumatic event or was that two days ago and now you're having that cramping and back pain? How much walking have you been doing after the event? Um, or you have that prevalent placenta, what has your doctor uh, asked you to do? Have they asked you to maintain bed rest and you haven't done it? Because you know people don't necessarily just not uh, follow the instructions. They may financially need to be up and working to sustain themselves. So it's not that they're reluctant to follow the rules. It's just they may have to do that just to pay the bills. So have you been walking around when you've been told to be on bed rest? Have you been driving around when you're told to be on bed rest? Taking stairs up and down? Have you fallen up and down? Have you been carrying heavy loads up and down? So these are all the questions you want to dig to around this. How many times have you been pregnant in the past? Did you have the same issue in the past? Was it an implantation issue? Did you have an early separation of your uterus? I'm sorry, for your placenta from the uterine wall? All good questions to ask uh, the patients that are experiencing bleeding from their vagina that are also pregnant. I hope that helped. As always, if you have any questions, hit us up at info at lifelineemstraining.com and we hope you have a great day.